So um, if you'd make welcome our Congressman from the 2nd District, uh, Congressman Bruce Poliquin. I don't think anybody uh, told it any better than Mike did. Mike, my heart goes out to you and, uh, and the 214 folks up in Madison. Uh, this is 214 jobs, this is 214 families, 214 paychecks. So, um, you know, we're doing everything we can now that, um, now that this has happened. I'll tell you, we're all <clears throat> shaped by life experiences and professional experiences. Uh, I grew up right up the road here in Waterville and uh, in Oakland. And my grandmother, Poliquin, was one of the best seamstresses you could find. She made some of the best shirts in the world over Hathaway shirts. Hathaway's closed. My late brother was um, working at the Cascade Woolen Mill in Oakland. It's closed. I worked the night shift at the Wyandotte Spinning Mill in Sydney to get through college. It's closed. My best buddy, Stevie Campbell, across the street in Violet Avenue, his dad was a machinist over at Scott in Winslow. It's closed. The only mill that's going in that area, as we now know, is the old Kai's Fiber makes paper plates, Hudamaki, right? So I am shaped by this. I get it. I get it, Mike. And I, I feel horrible about this. Uh, I will tell you this. There are a lot of issues, and Mike mentioned some of them, that affected the closure up at uh, Madison, not the least of which was the demand for that paper has been going down. And our energy costs here are high relative to other parts of the country, and our taxes are high. However, trade's got to be fair. Absolutely, trade has to be fair. So when we got a call from Mike, <clears throat> I'd been down there representing our second district for about a month. We immediately engaged, immediately engaged. And I will tell you, Mike Croteau, down in Washington, in front of the five judges at the International Trade Commission, let me tell you, he makes you proud. He tells it with heart, he tells the truth, he's prepared, and he won. And. Uh, <clears throat> Now, unfortunately, the work that we all did together down there with Senator King and Senator Collins, and I'm sure Shelley would have been there too, but it was in the second district, uh, was just too little too late. I mean, how unfair is that, Mike? When you get a foreign entity that's pumping a lot of money into folks that are competing with you, and it takes you two years to get the data you need to convince the ITC to make sure you go through this analysis, by that time the damage is done. But I was thrilled to vote against TPA. It's very simple. This is not a bunch, about a bunch of bureaucrats in Washington. It's about the state of Maine. I take this very seriously, and it's got to be fair, and your local representatives and your representatives down in Washington, in this case, they need to make sure they have input. And when it's done in the dark and there's no input, it is not fair. Now, we are right now evaluating TPP. And it is about, you know, <laughs> and we read everything. And we are pouring through this document. And I will tell you, I will look at it exactly the way I looked at TPA. Does it help us or not? Then it becomes a pretty easy decision. But that's what we're going through right now. Now, <clears throat> I would like to mention a couple things, because this is a very painful time for a lot of folks in central Maine. Would, I want to repeat what's already been said. But there's some really good stuff, good stuff, that has been happening that we've been involved with, and I want to make sure that I mention those to you also, because there's another side to this. For example, sappy paper, 800 jobs in Skowhegan, 800 jobs. 800. They came to us about nine months ago and they said, Bruce, we're getting roughed up by the biomass regulations coming from DC. Maine is good with the DEP, and DEP working with the Boston folks at the EPA, but the Fed regulators are giving us a hard time. We got involved immediately, and we won. And EPA walked it back. Now, why is that important? 
Two things for me. Jobs, take-home pay. Jobs and take-home pay. So we need to do everything humanly possible to protect our jobs. We are still 90% forested in this state. We are the wood basket. And we've got tremendous opportunities as long as this trade is fair. So we stopped the problem with the biomass rigs that were coming down the road that were unfair and unnecessary at SAPI. Twin Rivers, another big victory for us up in the St. John Valley. Helen, I think you're from the St. John Valley, right? We talked about that. Oh, my grandparents, sorry. Okay. Um, the Bouchard side of our family is from uh, Frenchville, up in the St. John Valley, and the Pollicans are from Lewiston. We all got together in Central Maine, and I came out of the whole thing. But in any event, <laughs> Twin Rivers, 600 jobs. 600 jobs, Ron, at Twin Rivers. And you know what? You know what the feds were trying to do? The Food and Drug Administration was saying, it's a good idea, a good idea, to make sure you can't print the medication instructions that a pharmacy needs to have <coughs> when you buy your meds. Now, I'm 62 and I take a pill. I'm not going to tell you which one I, not that pill. <laughs> <laughs> not that pill, I don't take that pill. <clears throat> but in any event, Twin Rivers prints this paper. And the FDA was saying, you know, we don't need this. Pharmacies can go online. Now, wait a minute. We got power outages throughout the state all the time in the summer. We got the oldest average age in the country. My mother's 87, dad's 85. They can barely use a cell phone. They can't go online, and some of the pharmacies can't either. So we fought and we won. And the FDA walked it back. And we were able to use the authority that we have as the majority party, a Republican, to make sure we get this language inserted in the right bills to stop this dead in its tracks. It's all about jobs, it's all about take home pay. Another big success for us, BIW, 6,000 jobs. Now the asset happens to be in Shelley's district down in Bath, but about half the workforce lives in the second district. They go right west on 196 to Lisbon and Lewiston and Auburn and what have you. 6,000 jobs, what did I do? I voted very clear to fully fund our military and push like heck to get an extra destroyer, one and a half billion dollar contract. 6,000 jobs. It's all about jobs, it's all about take home pay. New Balance Shoes, this is one heck of a battle. And I'm a French Canadian, I like a little bit of combat. <clears throat> Let me tell you, this is pretty easy for me. We got one, I repeat, one athletic shoe manufacturer in the world that makes 100% of that shoe in America, and that is New Balance. We have 900 jobs run. Scow Higgin in Norwich Walk and in Norway, 900 jobs. Well, guess what? We're now fighting the Pentagon to make sure we put American-made shoes on American-made kids. Right now, when you have an enlistee in the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, they're issued their underwear and their socks and their marching boots and their dress shoes, but not their athletic shoes. And the reason is because it was, hasn't been until recently that we've had a company that makes 100% American-made athletic shoes. New Balance has invested a ton of money in their plants, and they are now 100% made in America. And we are pushing like heck to convince the Pentagon. Man, you have no idea what those bureaucrats are like over there. But can you imagine that? 150,000 recruits a year, and all of a sudden, they got to be issued U.S.-made, 100% New Balance athletic shoes, which, by the way, are the best in the world, and I wear them. Not tonight, because I'm trying to be polite, but I wear them. They're great shoes. We need to win that battle. It's all about jobs. Let me tell you another one that's coming down the pike. Auburn Manufacturing. 50 workers. What they manufacture is a fireproof tarp, a fireproof cloth and they hang them around folks that are welding. So over at BIW, Ron. So when the sparks in the middle goes flying, people don't get hurt, we don't start fires. They make them, Auburn Manufacturing. Well, guess what? They just filed documentation that I supported, along with our two senators in our district, because it's in my district, 
to have the International Trade Commission investigate unfair trade practices from China. We just started this. This is a fight that I want. We know how to do it now, Mike. And Ron, I know you have victories in the, in the past. So we are making good stride in this area. It's not all bad. On the food labeling part, and I know, and Shelly is really taking a lead on this, <clears throat> I'll tell you, I have one son. We are very close. Sammy's 25. I raised him from the time he was in diapers when Jane died. He was just a peanut. We are very close. Now, I will tell you this. I'm a horrible cook. <laughs> but nothing went in Sammy's belly until I knew what was in that package, that can, that whatever the heck it was. And that's why I voted to make sure we keep our labeling. And I'll do that in the future. Now, let's talk a little bit about take-home pay. How can we help you with take-home pay? Well, first of all, you got to fight like heck to keep your jobs. And we'll do that in great part by making sure our trade agreements are fair, and if they're not, shoot them down. Second of all, taxes. I want you to have as much money in your pocket as you can. Why do you want to send more money to Washington so they blow it on stuff we don't need? If taxes are lower, it means your take-home pay is higher. That's a good idea. And also, it helps our businesses grow so they can pay you more money. They can hire more people. That's good. Keeping your monthly electric bills low increases your take-home pay. Well, how do you do that? You make sure that we have plenty of natural gas up here. It's cheap. It burns cleaner than oil, obviously. And we have laid, not we, but some utilities and other folks have laid a lot of pipeline. They even made it to, made it to Madison. And it was helpful, but not enough and not in time. That is something I have supported and I will support. It's very important because this natural gas is used to create electricity at the power plants. We need to keep our electric bills low. It keeps more uh, take-home pay in your pockets. Also, I've supported and voted for permitting for federal, uh, for the construction of natural gas pipelines. So we get more quickly up here. That's a long-term project, but we're getting there. How about the cost of diesel, gasoline, and heating oil? Now, I drive a 2008 Volvo. It used to cost me about 55 bucks to fill this thing up. Cost me 27, 28 now. I'm saving 20 bucks a fill up. That's a thousand bucks a year. I'm feeding a family of four. I only have one child, but if I did, family of four for two and a half months on that savings. Now I'm also saving about a thousand, 1200 bucks a year on heating oil. That's another two and a half months. This is real money that puts your take home pay a higher. How do you do that? You make sure we fully develop our natural resources, our natural energy resources here in America. It can be anything. Wind, solar, oil, natural gas. For me, it's anything that lowers the price. Let me give you an example. One of the things I voted on very proudly last year is removing the ban on exporting our oil. Now, you might say, well, how is that going to help keep our bills down? Here's why. If our companies have a new market to sell their oil, it means they will produce more, the supply will go up, and the price will stay down. That is, it's also a national security issue. Wouldn't you rather have Western Europe be able to buy our energy instead of going to Russia or the Middle East? So we don't have to keep our kids going over there? We've got to keep the cost of gasoline, diesel, and heating oil, and electric bills down because it increases your take-home pay. Now, there's another way to increase your take-home pay. Repeal parts of Obamacare that raise your monthly premiums, your co-pays, and also your deductibles, and repeal the parts that kill jobs. Keep the parts that work. 
like the part that says you can buy insurance, you must be able to get it, you can take it with you, you can't be denied. We've been doing that main for years. But we've got to replace the parts, fix the parts that, that, that keep our take-home pay lower and not higher. Let me tell you a fun story about working across the aisle. <clears throat> Shelly and I disagree on a number of things, but that's okay. Like Obamacare. <laughs> well, now what I said was fixing the parts yeah, yeah. that don't work. Fixing the parts that don't work. Parts of it we want to keep. I got to tell you, this is a great story. I, I come from a background where you got to work with everybody. And you know when you lose a job or a mill shuts down, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It does not matter. We have a terrific industry. It's a growing industry in Maine that deals with sea urchins and sea cucumbers. You ever seen these things? They are as ugly as sin. I wouldn't eat them, but the folks in the Far East love them. They absolutely love them. So Shelly and I got together. We had a hearing down in Washington to bring one of our divers that came down from the Rockland area, one of our processors from Portland, and they testified along with some of the other folks uh, in, the, uh, in the government that, that deals with these regulations. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to say, well, the regulations that we have in the local seafood urchin, uh, a seafood, uh, sea urchin business and cucumber uh, uh, business, it's not enough. We need to have the federal government now to inspect them when they're down in New York about to board a plane to go over to Hong Kong. Problem is, in seven days, they perish. And each of these shipments are worth $23,000. So what we're trying to do is make sure that these regulations are fair and don't kill jobs. Lastly, and I'll close with this, we got to keep our country safe. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. I couldn't care less. For me, it's all about jobs, higher take-home pay, and keeping our families safe. What you saw in Brussels should scare the living daylights out of you, because you've seen it in Paris, You've seen it in Madrid. You've seen it in San Bernardino, California. This is not getting any better. That's why I stood up very loud, very clear, and convinced others to do the same, to vote against this Iran nuclear deal. This is a dangerous deal. Why in the world would we allow a country that wants to kill Americans and has American blood on its hands? $150 billion in cash and unfrozen assets in a pathway to nuclear weapons. Why in the world would we want to do that? I stood up against that. I also voted several times to make sure we do not allow refugees. God bless them. My heart goes out to them. We do not allow refugees in this country to resettle until we know who they are. We've got to know who they are. And we have to make sure our borders are secure. And lastly, we've got to protect the Second Amendment. It's one of our constitutional rights. We need to protect all of our constitutional rights, including our Second Amendment. So there are good things going on. It's not all bad. For me, it's about protecting our jobs, increasing take-home pay, keeping our families safe. I am honored to represent you in the Second District. Thank you very, very much. I look forward to standing with you as we go forward. Thanks. Can I ask you a question? Sure. On uh, increase the take-home pay. Yeah. One thing we've noticed over the years is that when you, one way to increase take-home pay is to allow workers to organize. And over the years, we've seen that deteriorate uh, mightily. I was wondering if I could get you to promise that you would vote against anything that would weaken the NLRA, National Labor Relations Act, or do away with the National Labor Relations Board. Would you do that for workers? What I will do, sir, and thank you, I'd have to know specifically what the issue was before. So I look at all these issues very carefully. I'm very thorough, and that's why I came down and voted against TPA. That's why I voted for labeling for food to make sure we know what our kids are eating. But everything, I get a, can't promise you something unless I see what it is. Everything I got to look at. It's the best answer I can give. It's the honest answer. I'm an honest guy. It's the best answer I can give you. Thank you, Congressman.